الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. أحببت في الله. Continue on in our study of the difference between advising and condemning by Imam Ibn Rajab. And as a, <clears throat> I want to make ishara or make a point that we are in immense need of understanding these issues because we have so much fitna in this day and time between Ahlul Sunnah. I'm not saying between Ahlul Sunnah and the Hizbis, but I'm talking about between Ahlul Sunnah, people whose menhaj is the same, whose aqidah is the same, who differ usually over Masail Amaliyah, meaning they agree on the issues Almiyah, you know, the, the knowledge based issues. They agree about that you must make Hajar of a Mubtadiha, uh, if there's Maslaha in that. Or they agree to those issues of Takfir and those issues of tafsiq and, and the other issues and the issues of aqidah and al-asma'i wa sifat. But a lot of the difference is how you practice that. And from the ijtihadat of some of our brothers and some of our mashayikh of making maybe tabdi' of particular individuals where other mashayikh disagree with them. And then this right here, the people begin to split and enmity develops between them. And at times, hizbiyah begins to develop and foment between the different camps. Wallahu musta'an. The Salaf used to hate that commanding good and forbidding evil be done in this manner. Meaning this is what uh, Ibn Rajab was referring to, that uh, people publicizing people's faults openly uh, <clears throat> as a form of advice. Instead, they love that it be done privately between the one commanding and the one being commanded, for indeed this is from the signs of sincere advice. This is since it is not the goal of the one who is advising to spread and publicize the faults of the person he is advising. Rather, his goal is only to put an end to the evil that he has fallen into. As for spreading and exposing someone's faults, then that is from the things that Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have forbidden. And Allah, may he be exalted, says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تُشِيعَ and to Shia al Fahisha to fill the Dina Amanu Lahum Adabun Alimun fi Dunya Walakhira. Wallahu Yalamu and Tumla Talamun. Wallola Fadlu Lahi Alekum Rahmatuhu and Allah Rufur Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitabil Kirim, verily those who love that the evil and indecent action of those who believe should be propagated and spread, they will have a painful torment in this world and in the hereafter. And Allah knows who you are. And, and Allah knows and you know not. And had it not been for the grace of Allah and his mercy, Allah would have hastened the punishment on you. And that Allah is full of kindness, most merciful. Then he said, the Imam said, the ahadith concerning the virtue of keeping the faults of others secret are many. And so there's many ahadith that illustrate this point of that we should conceal one another's faults. But if someone is openly given dawah and they're openly making mistakes, uh, advise them, especially if they're from Ahlul Sunnah, advise them secretly first. Advise them. And just because you advise them once does not mean that it's automatically going to have the result and that you should not be patient. This is the problem. We also do not have the wisdom. A lot of the people who involve themselves in these affairs, they don't have the hikmah. They don't have the patience and the helm. Instead, what they do, they say, we went to so-and-so masjid, we told them that they were wrong, and they didn't follow us, so we're making tibdi of them. Anyone who goes there is also a mubtadiyah, we won't give them salams, etc., etc. This is a big khata. Instead of having the wisdom and being patient in that perhaps the, the person has a wudj, or perhaps you know, the, the person has a different understanding or needs more time to develop for you to articulate that understanding and show with Dalil, not show based upon your desires, but show them with Dalil and wisdom and gentleness. But we don't we don't exercise that. And this is why we have many of the problems and splits and divisions that we have today. Some of the scholars would say to those who are commanding towards good, strive hard to conceal the faults of the sinners for indeed exposing their faults shows a weakness in Islam. The thing that deserves the most to be concealed is one's faults. It is for this reason that spreading someone's evil and, indec and indecent actions is linked to condemning. 
and they are both from the affairs of the evildoer. Since it is not the goal of the evildoer to put an end to the fault, nor that the believer avoids that fault or defect. Rather, his only goal is to spread and publicize the defects found in his believing brother and to destroy his honor. So he initiates that and repeats it. SubhanAllah, how many times have we seen this? And his intention is to belittle his believing brother by exposing his defects and bad qualities to the people so that some harm can fall upon him in this world. But as for the person that is sincerely advising, his aim in doing that advising is to eradicate the faults found in his believing brother and to help him avoid it. This is what Allah, the Most High, has described his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying, and verily there has come unto you a messenger from amongst yourselves. It grieves him that you should receive any harm or difficulty. He is anxious over you to rid you of the faults and sins. For the believers, he is full of piety, kind, and merciful. And he described Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his companions with that saying Muhammad Rasulullah Walladina Ma'hu Ashad Ashadda al Kufari Ruhama U Bainuk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, the messenger is the messenger of Allah. And those who are with him, meaning his companions, are severe with the disbelievers and merciful towards one another's. And he described the believers with the characteristics of patience and mutual advising of one another towards mercy and compassion. Look at these characteristics that Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, Rahmatullah Wasiya, one of our Salaf, how he is describing how we should be with one another. But we don't accept this advice. Rather, we take it into our own hands and we only exercise being harsh with one another and being quick to criticize one another and having suadhan for one another, you know, a negative outlook towards one another and being pessimistic towards one another and negating any good that we have done uh, instead of working together and, and advising one another in private based on kindness and gentleness and based upon dalil from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Imam said, But what drives the evildoer to propagate his brother's evil and to disgrace him is force and harshness, his love for abusing his, uh, his believing brother, and his desire to inflict some harm upon him. These are the characteristics of the devil, the one who beautifies disbelief, sin, and disobedience to the children of Adam, so that due to it, they may become amongst the dwellers of the hellfire, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, verily the devil is an enemy for you, so take him as an enemy. Verily he only calls his party of followers to be from amongst the dwellers of the hellfire. Subhanallah, Yad'u Hizbahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innama Yad'u Hizbahu. He said, Verily he calls his party, meaning his 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 group of followers to be amongst from amongst the dwellers of the hellfire. And he says, after telling us the story of Iblis, when he was the prophet, uh, when he was with the prophet of Allah, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and the evil plot that he unleashed on him, such that it brought him to the to be cast out from paradise. <clears throat> Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, O children of Adam, let not the devil deceive you as he got your parents out of paradise, strip, stripping them of their garments to show them their private parts. So what a difference there is between one whose intention it is to advise, giving nasiha, and one whose intention it is to disgrace, fadiha. And no one confuses one of these with the other except someone who does not possess sound intellect. So this shows us a habitatillah. It's imperative that we have ilm and fiqh when we enter into these issues. We cannot begin to talk about jarwa ta'deel or begin to talk about nakhl al-mukhalif, uh, mukhalif you know, to speak about people who differ with us or who have mistakes or have fallen into issues or what have you. But 
with elm. You can only speak about those issues with knowledge. You need the tools. You need the wisdom. So advise one another to cease speaking about these issues. Cease eating the flesh of one another and leave that to those people who have knowledge who can discern between condemning and advising, who can discern between namima and ghiba, backbiting and slander and advising their brother for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who can practice those principles. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.